going to show you some of the changes introduced in Mesh Animator 2.0. 2.0 introduces GPU animation support through custom shaders, as well as some usability improvements to the snapshot mode, which is the legacy classic mode of Mesh Animator. So first I'm going to bring in my Unity package for Mesh Animator 2.0. Now that that is imported, I can open up the Mesh Animator Bake window by going to Assets, Create, at the bottom, Mesh Animator. As you can see, the UI, is, UI has been redone to be less cluttered and easier to use. You now have the option to specify an output folder as well as drop down menu to swap between snapshot and shader animated mode. So let's start out by specifying our asset to bake. We'll choose one of the example models. <clears throat> For example, we'll choose the human character. So we can drop our prefab in and then start setting up our animations to bake. Um, you have an information section which will show you the differences between shader animated and snapshot mode. Here we have our output folder to where our mesh animated assets will be created. For example, I can create a new folder call this animated meshes. Drop that in there. So it's snapshot mode works like it always has in previous versions of Mesh Animator, where we'll generate a snapshot of each frame of animation and then swap that mesh out at runtime. Um, shader and an animated mode introduces custom shaders and animation textures to animate the mesh on the GPU allowing for less memory usage than snapshot mode, better performance, and full GPU batching. So I'm going to choose that for my example here. If we look at our prefab for our character, just a standard human, um, has some running animations, idle animations, that sort of thing. So if we go under animation setup, we can see that those were auto-populated from the skin controller. So we have running forward, backward, left, right, and an idle. And you can turn those animations on and off to be baked, as well as add custom animations if you they're not automatically populated. So once that is all set up, we can also go to mesh setup. This is if you had multiple meshes. Here you can specify um, exposed transforms. So in this case, we can see that we have a, a wrist bone exposed. We can add that like so. And then also, we can specify bake preferences. Bake preferences will change based on what mode you have selected. For instance, I can choose my bake FPS, how, how many frames I want to bake, and how often. Um, in shader and animated, animated mode, we can choose our bake texture size, and our, also our bake texture quality. All of this is documented in the documentation, which you can view by clicking up here. We also have LOD preferences, and some utilities. In snapshot mode, we have the same bake FPS, but then we also have compression um, to control how accurate our vertices are, which is similar to texture quality and shader animated mode, and then also some normal calculation settings. So let's choose shader animated mode, and we're going ahead and bake those five animations. So now that we've baked our animations, we can go to our animated meshes folder. And we'll see that we have our mesh animated assets in this folder. We'll have a prefab, which has a mesh animator component on it. And then we'll also have our five different animation assets. So if we drop this animated mesh into the scene, we can see that it's currently displaying the breathing idol. I'm going to make sure that these are set to loop because they are looping animations. They are. And since we cho chose shader animated mode, we can see that we generated animation textures for each one of the animations. Another thing, important thing to note is in shader animated mode, you need to use custom shaders. I provided um, the most commonly used shaders, including some mobile shaders, diffuse, unlit shaders, 
as well as a standard shader. So we currently have this character in the scene. If we hit play, he will start playing his idol. And then we can change the animation through code by calling play on the mesh animator asset. But for now, I can just change the default mesh animation and hit play again. And I'll play the run animation. Now this is all happening on the GPU. So if we go to our game scene, make our camera a little more friendly and start duplicating. We have open up our stats tab. We can see that we have six batches right now. So if we duplicate that mesh, I'm gonna move my scene view over here. If we duplicate that mesh, we're still at six batches because we have GPU instancing enabled. So all of these meshes are being batched and animated inside of the shader. So we can continue to do that. Eventually, once we hit vertex limits, we'll start to increase our batch size, but we can continue generating batches and they will all be instanced. So if we open up our frame debugger and enable that, we can step through and see how the batches are rendered. Here's our shadow pass. So we can see that we have two batches for our characters. First batch includes all of these characters right up front, and then the second batch is those ones in the back. If we go to our shader for this character and turn off GPU instancing, and open the frame debugger back up, we can see we now have 440 batches no GPU instancing compared to 27 if we have GPU instancing turned on. So that's the basics of converting a character. So let's go look at some of the example scenes. First up, we have a basic crowd example scene. This is similar to the Mesh Animator 1.0 example. So if we play this scene, at first we'll see that it has, one second, let me change back my shader. The example character has a custom shader that uses material property blocks to change his shirt color, per instance. So we can see right now, if we turn on our stats, we're using skin meshes. Um, we have 580 draw calls. We're getting about 30 FPS. as we increase the crowd size, it drastically loses performance. Um, this is because it, it's very CPU intensive to display skin mesh renderers. And the animator component also has overhead for each instance in the scene. So right now we're at 4,000 meshes. We're getting about 10 FPS. If we switch to mesh animator snapshot mode, we can see the instant improvement. We still get our GPU instancing. Um, in snapshot mode, meshes that are displaying the same frame of animation at the same time will be batched. So we can see we have 843 batches and we have 1500 instances that are being batched. This is because they, they are showing the same exact mesh. And so those instances can be batched together. Now, if we switch to shader mode, we should see even better performance because now the meshes are not being swapped per frame and they can all be batched. So we can see the crowd si size is the same. We only have 20 batches and we have almost 3000 instances being saved by batching. Also with GPU mode, you can get far more meshes so we can continue to increase our crowd size up to 10,000 even and still get very good FPS. We're getting around um, 50 or so in the editor right now with 6,000 instances being batched together. So that's just a basic example of how GPU mode works and how it's batched together. Let's go look at um, a different example. So in our crowd AI example, this uses the same 
human model as well as a skeleton model and some birds. All of these are using shader animated mode. And now remember, each one of these meshes is not a, or is a unique transform and cave object in the scene. If we look at our hierarchy view, each one of these has their own transform, their own components. So they can be individually controlled and animated to do whatever you need. Um, in this example scene, I can move around with my WASD keys, rotate with my mouse, zoom in and out. So we can see we have 5,000 skeletons, 5,000 humans, and 1,000 birds right now. Um, I can use the sliders on the left here to increase that size. Each one of these is running very basic AI. It plays an animation, moves to a position, kind of repeats. Um, in this example, I can hit tab, which will jump to any random human. And I can start running around with that human using my WASD keys. So we can see we're just playing a lot of different meshes right now, almost 11,000 meshes. We're only using 50 draw calls. So if we pause our game here and open up our frame debugger and enable that, we can see how these different meshes are batched together. So if we step through the frame debugger, we can see we have some upfront things that are rendered first, and then we start, we render our plane, and then we start rendering the crowd batches. You can see them popping in and out there in the distance. So we continue to play. <clears throat> so this is the type of performance you can get with Mesh Animator. Um, much much greater quantities of animated meshes that you can do in mesh animator than with a skin mesh renderer um, you, you can basically make any crowd size that you need um, it's not restricted by by the cpu anymore everything has animation textures that are shared throughout the crowd you can use material property blocks to set custom attributes for instance all these shirt colors and they still get batched. I can kind of increase my crowd sizes here. Let's bump up some of these. And it'll be a little slower because I'm in the editor um, and having those transforms has a little bit of overhead as well as the AI, the basics of the AI. But we can see we get some pretty big crowds um, animating here. So we have 80 batches, 23,000 instances are being batched together and we we don't lose the individual control. So we can still drop in here, grab any of these characters, run around. We can see each one of these is playing their own unique animation. Um, they each have their unique transform. One of the other features that we can kind of explore with Mesh Animator is the ability to combine multiple meshes together. So let me open up another example. So in the cube example, um, we have a skin mesh that looks like this. Um, and this has 22, 21 child cubes inside of it. Um, when we bake this, in Mesh Animator, for instance, if I was to open this up in here, we can go to our mesh setup and we can see all the different mesh filters. So when we bake this, it all gets combined into a single mesh filter. Um, so if we run the example, so this is using skin mesh mode. Um, once I I'm up to about 1,000 instances of that. We can see that by kind of moving here. They're just getting spawned off in the distance. Um, so we're, we're already dropped down to 30 FPS. Um, we can clear that out. And if we use shader mode, um, we'll be able to get far, far more instances without losing performance. Um, and they'll also all batch. So we can see we're still at 60 FPS and we're up to almost 2,000 instances. I could probably go for quite a while and not not drop below 60 FPS. And that's even with me screen recording right now. So that's another feature that you can use if you had um, different characters with different 
outfits, that sort of thing, you can combine all them into a single mesh to get a single draw call out of that. Um, that pretty much wraps up Mesh Animator 2.0. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or message me on the forums. Um, as always, you can click up here to view the documentation. And this is the new Mesh Animator 2.0 documentation. It's been completely rewritten, um, organized a little bit better, and um, covers a lot, a lot more in-depth sections for using Mesh Animator, setting up shaders, that sort of thing. So feel free to explore that and let me know um, your feedback. Happy to hear it and happy to help with any questions that anyone has. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you.